1991, Lake Wales, Florida. Alan Mann was living with his parents and works the graveyard shift. There was one day that would stand out for him in particular, a day that began the Mann family's paranormal experience. Alan had the afternoon off and returned home at 3 p.m. when he decided to take a nap. He woke later to see a woman standing at his door. She turned and walked off. Alan got up and went to the door to see who she was, but the woman turned a corner and disappeared. He looked all over the house for her, but never saw her again. The doors and windows had been locked, making it unlikely for someone just to barge in. He would tell his mother, Sandra, about the incident, but she shrugged it off as a dream he had. Sometime later, Alan met Linda. She would move into the man's home and marry him. One night, Sandra and Linda were watching TV together in the living room. I had a little dog, Prince, beside me, and he was on a pillow. And I looked down at the end of the couch, and I saw this white, smoky thing. The first thing I thought was fire. And by that time, the dog had gotten up on his feet, and then it just disappeared. Despite not seeing what happened, this led Linda to believe the house was haunted. Curiosity would get the better of her, and with the help of a friend and Alan, they would use an Ouija board to contact the spirit or spirits that resided in the house. The group would discover the last name of the spirit, Kramer. Linda and Alan would tell his parents about the name, but David, Alan's father, wasn't buying it. He believed that the house wasn't haunted and didn't want to hear anything more about the matter. One night, while in Ellen's room, he and Linda were watching TV when she started to laugh. All of a sudden, she just snapped, and she got this weird look. She pretty much attacked me. She was laughing. She had some weird laugh I had never heard. It didn't even sound like her. She has this squeaky little giggle, and this was almost an evil laugh. I tried to get away, and it made her more violent, and she started putting more force on my arms. So I pushed against her, and I slammed her against the wall three times, and she released me. And she put her head on my shoulder again, and started talking and picking up the conversation exactly where she left off before she snapped. He explained, Linda had no memory of this happening. Upon the advice of a spiritualist, they poured salt around the outside of the house. The family would even keep bags of salt under their beds and try an exorcism themselves. While this did help at first, eventually the activity would return, getting stronger. Around this time, there was a horrible smell that couldn't be explained and heard a mass of people with a female voice over them. Every member of the family got severe headaches. Dave himself would have a moment that not even he could explain. As he was walking down the hallway, he suddenly stopped and could smell the stench. David recalled a voice said to him, This is Isabella. A psychic the man's would later hire claimed the spirit to be of Isabella Kramer, the same name Linda, Alan, and their friend would discover with the Ouija board. The man's would decide to move. While Linda was packing, she began cursing and swearing at the ghost when a lamp that was unplugged at the time erupted into flames and lasted 30 seconds. The story of the haunting would reach the Center for Paranormal Studies in Silver Springs, Florida. The three founders were armed with electronic equipment when they investigated the house. Andrew Nichols, a parapsychologist, said the following about being in the house definitely had an impressive ambience to it, almost depressive type of feeling. After being in the house for several hours, we all began to experience headaches. In Alan's bedroom, they took two photos. Andrew himself would take them with a Polaroid camera. While the first photo yielded nothing out of the ordinary, it was the second that was more intriguing. A little off-center, next to David, is a humanoid shape. Sandra believes the shape to be that of Isabella Kramer. The photo would be sent to Polaroid in March 1993. There, it was
always deemed authentic, the shape not a defect from the film or camera. Since the events took place, the house has never been looked into again. David Mann died in June 2007. Alan and Linda divorced but remained friends until his death in November 2018. What did happen at the Mann house? Were they truly experiencing paranormal activity or something else entirely? Background of the house revealed no one named Isabella Kramer lived there. However, the area was once home to a cemetery with all bodies being removed. But is it possible they missed one or two? Is it also possible that the events were the result of the bodies being disturbed from their eternal rest? It could have also been a mass hallucination or gas leak that none of them were aware of. In any case, they know what they experienced, and it is something that has stuck with them for the rest of their lives. I'm Creepy the Cryptid, and I hope you will join me next time for another episode. And remember to look around the corner, because you never know what's lurking in the darkness. Ha, ha, ha.